Linden, Texas, childhood home of Eagles frontman Don Henley, also the birthplace of T-Bone Walker, and lots of Texas history. Texas is full of lost history. From lost cemeteries to abandoned buildings. From the infamous to the obscure. Hitch a ride and travel across the Lone Star State, looking for hints of Texas' colorful past. Our lost history. This is Expedition Texas, and we're gonna find it. Expedition Texas, presented by the Fredonia Hotel in historic Nacogdoches, the oldest town in Texas. Call now to live the life of luxury starting at just $99 per night. Linden, Texas, the county seat of Cass County. It's downtown square bustling with businesses because people from all over the county came here for court in this beautiful courthouse. But in August of 1933, fire broke out in that courthouse. The fire raged from dawn to dusk, consuming the second floor and the roof. The only means to control the fire was a bucket brigade. This led to the formation of the Linden Volunteer Fire Department in 1935. Then in 1939, the construction of the Linden Firehouse. No known photos exist of that structure in its early days. More about that later. Today, we're visiting that 1939 firehouse and we'll explore what remains of it. Sue Lazara is a local historian who has documented much of Linden's history and tells us about this historic property. So we're in the height of depression and they want a firehouse, so they get a plan. They get a, you know, a drawing and um, plans and specs together and they approve them in 1937 and they make a call for all the poor people and they say, okay, if you want to work on this project, we'll give you credit against your your property tax debt and please bring materials too if we accept them you'll get credit on your property tax you know arrears so that's how they built this building they did it for seven hundred fifty dollars so we went to the firehouse and met up with sue and john knapp to talk about the building and explore what's inside so uh 1939 firehouse huh yes now i understand that, uh, the courthouse burning had a little bit to do with the the need for this firehouse right well, it was a motivator because our fire rates were so high and yeah. the bucket brigades did not succeed in saving the building. That, that makes sense. And uh, so thus was born this fire station. But I understand that uh, what we're looking at now, only part of it was the original. And kind of show us where things were in, in 1939, if you don't mind. Okay. Well, the stucco is largely intact okay. and the form of the building, this, this high parapet wall, that mm -hmm. steps back on the two sides. That's all original. The doors and the brick column infill is all just later schlocky <laughs> modifications that they did to to um, make it go another another lap. That marker up there on the top was the original door size, and which was actually just a one door bay for one fire truck, and then the second door on the left was added later on. All right, Sue. So, so what's the the extra roof on top here? That's a temporary roof that's protecting it because the membrane roof is not holding water. Oh, okay. So is, yeah. is, that, is the roof collapsed? The roof is completely collapsed at the north end. Oh. And it's working this way. So before the rest of it comes down, we decided we better head inside the old fire station and check it out. Well, as you can see here, there's concrete, poured concrete, which yeah. was added in 1949 when the stair was installed and the upper level was built. <coughs> that so stair's stair, not getting anywhere now. The stringers are collapsed. The post collapsed that was uh, holding this up. You can see here, and there was a little landing at the top, and they had a restroom, a, you know, a single hole restroom there, and then they had a room upstairs for the boys to sleep in. And, and um, Did they have a pole to slide down? No pole, no they pole. had a stair. No pole. That is the fire chief's desk. Well, that's a really cool old desk right it there. Sure is. We 
We're in historic Linden, Texas, where we've just entered the 1939 firehouse built to house the Linden Volunteer Fire Department. Historians Sue Lazera and John Knapp have just cracked open a side door and brought us inside. We start out by exploring the newer part of the building, added much later. Okay, so this is a lot different uh, construction than out there. This is hollow clay tile, uh -huh. which is very insulated, insulating, and they never finish the walls. They just put some concrete, you know, waterproofing on where the grade is. And they, get, they and put another vehicle in this here? This door came down from here. Oh. And this was a vehicle door. You can see by the construction that this was okay. built with this exact size door. Okay. So John, I understand you did a lot of the, a lot of the work on coming in here and, and finding things and, and cleaning well, it out, right? I did a lot of the cleanup work, yes sir. It was a very interesting building. We found some old stuff upstairs, especially uh -huh. the old the fire chief's desk. There was a bathroom right up under here that was falling through the floor, and we saved the lavatory and a couple other pieces the of toilet what, paper holders still there. Yeah, it sure <laughs> enough is. Yeah, both of these toilets were falling through the floor. You can see the drain pipe is still. It yeah. was basically just hanging on the drain pipe. We wow. kind of set up under here and worked it through the floor right to and where it's standing brought up. Brought it down to here, huh? Yep. There's some old fire equipment up here on top of this rack. Uh -huh. We think this was to hook on the end of a fire hose and either a spray nozzle or to like stick it into a water source and pump oh. it through because it would screen out any kind of leaves or debris. Yeah. At least that's Those what we think. What is this? Oh, parking tickets. <laughs> Your parking meter time has expired. That's funny. You know how much a parking ticket cost back in the day when these tickets were used? Does it say on yeah. there? Minimum fine for this violation is 25 cents if deposited within the next 12 hours. Oh wow. If not paid within this time limit, an enforcement warrant will be issued and an assessment of $3 collected. Wow. Serious business. Yeah. yeah. A whole box of those? Yep. Parking. Yeah, that's a whole bunch of them. I mean, if, you, if you really wanted to, uh, you could go around downtown sticking these on people's cars and really, <laughs> really mess with it. Rake in the coin. Yeah. Rake in the 25 yeah. cents. Yeah, if they get to you within 12 hours, if not, you get three yeah. bucks. Uh, this stuff, random stuff we found, I don't really know a lot of what it is, but it looks really cool. There's a couple old typewriters we found upstairs. A lot of this stuff here, um, these chairs, the benches over on the other side there, were all upstairs in this. Uh, this part of the building here, right where we're at. Hey, I see the old desk up here. You said this is uh, the chief's desk? Yep, that is the fire chief's desk. Now, how old is this desk in your estimation? Oh man, I don't know. I would guess um, maybe in the 50s, the 40s even. And then... That, this was part of the bathroom, I think, if I remember correctly. The basin here, this was like a kind of a jet wall, a little bit in there. And the toilet was through that opening where that cross timber is bracing the door. Yes. The floor we're standing on was added several years later, but this is actually original to the building. It's this roof wood here. Oh, okay. I see you said that the Lions Club used to meet up here. Yes, sir. And there's their sign right there. <laughs> As we wrapped up our tour of the old fire station, you'll recall that earlier I mentioned there are no known photos of the old fire station from when it was in operation. That's important to what Sue is about to tell us. We have decided that there needs to be a reward. Oh, really? And we are offering $1,000 for a pre-1960 photo of this building. Did you hear that, people? There's a reward for a pre-1960 photo of this building. So if you have any connections or know anybody from Lincoln yeah. or ever lived here and had pictures of this building pre-1960. And it, it doesn't have to be a beauty shot. It, if there's a little child with an Easter basket, you know, over in that yard and her mother took a shot of her, that's right. the photo we want. It okay. would show some, any photo that really shows some element of the building okay. at that early period.
We're in Linden, Texas, where we've just explored a 1939 fire station. Linden has produced several noted musicians. One of those musicians decided to bring the music back home to Linden, opening the Music City Texas Theater. His name is Richard Bowden, and you might recognize him as one half of the comedy songwriting duo Pinkerton Bowden. Noted for parody hits like Mama She's Lazy and Help Me Make It Through the Yard. My name is Richard Bowden. Uh, I was born and raised here in Linden, Texas, and this was the, what, growing up was the American Legion Auditorium, where me and my band, which included uh, Don Henley, uh, Jerry Surratt, and Freddie Nice, we were known as the Four Speeds. <laughs> And uh, we played dances out here every weekend. We drew, we had 800 kids on our mailing list. Every weekend we would pack this place and uh, just, they'd just dance their little hearts out. And so it, it has a historical value as well as a sentimental value to me and, and those people that I just mentioned. And, uh, we're glad we were able to turn it into what it is today. And what it is today is the Music City Texas Theater. The former American Legion Hall hosts major stars now in concert right here in Linden, Texas. So we stopped in to visit with Linden's resident celebrity to talk about it. Hey Richard, how's it going? Uh, good, how about yourself? Oh man, doing good. What a beautiful Great. theater you have here. Yeah, we're pretty proud of it, actually. And, yeah. and you know, to think that uh, for you, really, your music career started all right here on the stage. It did. Uh, I guess when I was in elementary school, my dad uh, produced the annual Lions Club Follies out here. And, uh -huh. uh, me and my sister were up on stage uh, doing the Banana Boat song. <laughs> Yeah, he actually built me a conga drum out of plywood and some rawhide. Wow. Uh, I wish I still had it, but that was like 60 years ago. <laughs> well, the building, though, that you did that in is still here. and It is. Uh, I understand that uh, when you guys came in here, you really took about restoring this building, but not necessarily to that 50s look, more to something a little more contemporary here that's right. actually really nice. Well, we wanted to give it a theater look. Yeah. Before it just had a auditorium look. Mm -hmm. We used the actually we used the wood that we took out of the the uh, purlings and the lath that were in the ceiling between those beams. Uh, we used that to make those sconces out of the the wall columns. Awesome. Uh, once again, we're designed by our artist buddy uh, Brad Attaway. Now. <sighs> Folks probably remember your name, but they don't. But I'm going to remind them a little bit here. Okay. Tell us about Pinkard and Bowden. It's been a while. Yes. <laughs> uh, well, uh, I had gone to Los Angeles and uh, spent a good bit of time, uh, 13 years, rocking and rolling. Mm -hmm. Decided uh, it was time to give up trying to become a rock star. Okay. So I moved to Nashville to focus on songwriting. And I partnered up with a guy named Sandy Pinkard who had written several number one country hits. And I swear, uh, we accidentally started a comedy duo that, <laughs> that lasted 16 years. We worked out of uh, one of the publishing companies in Nashville uh, as writers, but every time we'd show up in the morning to write songs, we'd start writing these stupid songs and, and <laughs> parodies of other songs. and. Uh, who knew? Yeah. Uh, well, we were with Warner Brothers Records. We got a record deal, which we had sworn that we weren't going to try to. Yeah. Anyway, the president of Warner Brothers got wind that we were making people laugh all over, and he came to us. Yeah. Said, well, why don't we do a record? And so That's we looked cool. at each other and said, well, okay. Why not? Yeah. And uh, five albums later. You guys had, uh, had actual comedy hits. The biggest hit we had was a parody of Judd's song. Their first number one hit was uh, Mama, He's Crazy. And uh, we turned it into Mama, She's Lazy. And, <laughs> and it, it, it got high up in the chart.
We're in Linden, Texas, where earlier we explored a 1939 fire station. After doing that, we went out to what was once the old American Legion Hall. This old building has been renovated and now welcomes nationally touring music acts to tiny Linden, Texas. Richard Bowden is the man in charge and he's agreed to show us around the Music City, Texas Theater. This was my office when I was the executive director. I couldn't stand the puke green, so we got it off the brick in here. Yeah. What'd you do to get that off? <laughs> uh, made somebody else do it. <laughs> <laughs> Not a bad idea. Uh -uh. So come on down and let me show you the, the green room. I think we've actually... Oh, wait, is it the same color green as upstairs? Well, no, it's, it's a new <laughs> shade of green. Oh, okay, yeah, I like this. <laughs> yeah. I like this a lot better. Yeah, but uh, as you can see here, we had an article, Linden's Theater's Kitchen Earns Accolades from Stars. Ooh, and nice. uh, it does. Uh, I mean, yeah. people talk about how good the venue itself is and right. how they love to perform here. But the main thing that sticks in their mind is the food. Is how you, you feed them. So what is it that you do that, that makes well, it so memorable to them? Well, we just, we just have, instead of a, a deli tray, we have actual hot meals. Oh, nice. A lot of times, uh, some of the ladies in town will bring their pies and, uh, and their special dishes and stuff. And we had to take a wall out here and uh, put this bar in and uh, we did new kitchen cabinets and everything, uh, so we did a lot of work down here too. I can see the chef didn't show up for us today, so. No! Oh man. That's one of the nicest features about this place is the fact that you, the artists can go without being seen by the audience nice. straight from the green room right up onto the stage. Oh, okay. Uh, artists don't like to have to walk through the audience no. the scene before they hit the stage. Uh -huh. This comes right from the green room right onto the stage. Oh, so that's out here. Since we're on the stage where it all started for you, I, right. uh, I have a request. You want me to sing the banana I, boat song? Again? Sure, yeah, that, <laughs> something. I, I don't know. Let me get... <laughs> I saw oh, this over a, here earlier, so there's I, a guitar here. I knew that it, uh, All right. that maybe we might could get a song out of you. Hang on, you're gonna need a stool to sit on since there's yeah, no strap, there right? there should be some back there. There's one right over there. All right. All right, do you play with a pick? Cause there's a pick right here. <laughs> All right, I'll take it. I think that's a pick. That looks like it. Something somebody was using for a yeah. pick anyway. All right. What would you like to hear? Oh, I don't know. How about one of the Pinkard and Bowden songs? All right. Well, this is, this is one of the more famous ones. I don't need to be. Okay. Take the rose bush from my hair. <laughs> Shake loose all the little thorns. <laughs> Sprinkler doing on so dang early in the morning, crawling home at 5 a.m. Lord, the sidewalk sure is hard. <laughs> Guess I drank too much again. Me make it through the yard. <laughs> Put some coffee on the stove. And we'll go try to find your car. I can't hack it all alone. So help me make it through the yard. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Can you believe we got paid to do that? <laughs>